Now for months now, we've made a point of doing our best to elevate the voices that we're hearing in Portland's protests. And we've played, you've probably seen, countless sound bites, long form sound bites from protest leaders and people in the crowd. And we do that to give you a better sense of who is down there and why. But we got a lot of emails from people who say they felt like the perspective of police was missing. And that's something that we agreed with, which is why Dan, you also might have seen, made several public pleas on this show to let our team sit down and have a conversation with a police officer who's been at these protests. No spokespeople, no chief, no union president, a.k.a. not the people that we usually get. We wanted a straight up cop who's been there night after night. Well, one of those officers heard about Dan's requests, heard about our requests, and he reached out to us to volunteer. So Thursday of last week, Sergeant Brent Maxey and I sat down and we talked for more than an hour. Our full conversation is up now on YouTube. For background, Sergeant Maxey is an 18 year veteran of the Portland Police Bureau. He was on the rapid response team for 13 of those years. Right now, he is a patrol cop out of Central Precinct and he's been at the protests most nights, he says. We wanted him to know, we let him know ahead of time that we wanted to hear his take. We also wanted to challenge him and get his take on tactics that we've seen officers use and ones that people have objected to, especially in cases where, as you'll see, the person on the receiving end of the force clearly didn't do anything wrong. He answered to all of it. So all that in mind, we're going to play for you now large portions of this interview, starting with me asking him why he agreed to this in the first place. Our team at KGW, our team at The Story, had, had reached out multiple times asking to speak to an officer who's been at the protests. You emailed us yeah. and said that you would do it. Yeah. Why? Uh, you know, throughout my entire career, I've never been the type of person to do this sort of thing. I quietly do my job and I go home. And um, there is so much um, in the way of what I believe to be false information out there. And nobody is really out there speaking up. Um, you know, it, it kind of started off where uh, there was a letter that was written to Mayor Wheeler that was public from um, House Speaker Kotek. And it really struck a little bit of a chord with me um, where she mentioned that, uh, you know, without police, uh, escalating the situation with the, you know, what amount to riots, um, that the crowd would simply stop their behavior and go away. Uh, what is your response? Like, what is the truth in your mind that refutes what Speaker Kotek said or that you feel like people aren't hearing? Well, you know, first of all, um, you know, a lot of a lot of the officers that have spoken up have, have already touched on this, but, you know, these, um, these protests, they started off as protests. I mean, there was, there's a legitimate message to a lot of this. And, um, you know, whether we agree with how we got to where we are, um, there's a, they, there is a legitimate group that has a legitimate message. And I believe Portland is doing an outstanding job of addressing that. And it has been for the last several years in the form, you know, in different reforms and things like that. Um, but uh, these, have now devolved they've been hijacked by you know um by anarchists essentially and and so these uh you know they've 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 just kind of devolved into these into these masses of people that are just bent on on destruction and and hurting mainly hurting police or anybody that that really disagrees with that message i mean there's been very few instances where things have not happened that have caused the police to react to what people in the crowd are doing, uh, but every single night that these are turned, these are deemed either riots or unlawful assembly, people that are peaceful have been given the opportunity to leave through our announcements, um, you know, time and time again, over and over again. And the people that choose to stay, in my view, are complicit in the overall, the overall action that's that's happening. Um, we see. I see people, um, you know, you, you, you see videos of, of people with their hands up getting knocked over by police. Um, that's just a snippet of what's happening. Those same people are the ones throwing rocks and bottles. Um, those, those are the same people that are throwing, you know, mortars at us. Uh, 
and they're trying to get that clip that shows us doing something you know uh wrong illegal brutal something that looks brutal but i do have to push back on that in the sense that you said the people that are being pushed the people that are that are seen in those short videos mm -hmm. are the ones throwing rocks bottles munitions when we know journalists have been pushed journalists have been challenged physically and we are absolutely not the ones sure. and not to say that we're at all more important than anyone else who is out there, but that's a very tangible, obvious example that that's not true. Okay. And people might look at that and say, police have said, well, they're throwing rocks and bottles, therefore we've used force as well. They're not the same though. You all signed up for a job where you uphold the law mm -hmm. and we're all expected to follow it. You're expected to uphold it. Sure. So when you say the people that are at the receiving end of physical force are the ones that are launching these projectiles at us, on multiple occasions, we know that hasn't been true. So that it can't be a blanket truth that's applied to the logic of this. Okay, well, I mean, in that case, I, I, I will, you know, concede that some, sometimes people get caught in the middle. Um, and, and that, you know, that statement, I, you know, I, I wasn't trying to make a blanket statement, but based on my observations, I, I, I mean, more often than not, what you're seeing is, again, it's a snippet of, uh, it's a snippet in time, but it is, generally people that are engaged in these criminal acts and a lot of times um, you know we all know that there are people that are out there that they you know I walk back to to where I said the people that choose to stay are complicit in this um, you know that's that's partially I mean the, the the fact that they're choosing to stay even though they may be peaceful in and of, of themselves you know, I, those might be some of the people that, you know, well, maybe they're not the ones that are actually throwing the objects and they've got their hands up, they get pushed. Um, you know, people get caught up in the middle when, you know, stuff is going on back behind them and we make a push. It's, 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 it's really difficult to tell out there, you know, who is really who is who and, and, and who's responsible for what just um, among amidst this, this chaotic event valid. I don't think I'd be able to tell. But then someone might say, well, let's walk that a step forward and say that force shouldn't be used against people if you can't be sure that they're the ones that are being aggressive toward you. What's the what's the solution, though? I mean, I, mean, I don't know. This would be my know. next question. Like, what? Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, what what's the solution? We've given every opportunity to leave for people that don't want to be subject to a use of force, to, that don't want to uh, be violent. Um, it's it's almost like it's almost like uh, um, you know standing in 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 the freeway. I mean this this area has been closed, and uh, you know officers are you know if you don't leave, you're subject to use force. And then when a line of officers is running towards you and you stand there. Um, because we're trying to get to the back of the crowd where the the real criminals are in the back, you know, throwing things at us. I mean, who who's who's responsible for that? I, I you know, I mean, I don't know the answer because we've seen people that are doing just that that we run past and they turn right around and they get on our back and and start doing criminal acts from behind. Now, to be clear, Portland police have documented and publicized and we've reported the things that they say are being thrown at them. Things like commercial fireworks, ball bearings, concrete. People have also, and we've seen videos of this and we've shown this, set fires inside buildings, including the Portland Police Association headquarters and a precinct which had officers inside it at the time. But Sergeant Maxey had spoken publicly before at a press conference about one of the events that he says bothered him most. And that was when he was standing in a line with fellow officers while men in the crowd facing them yelled horribly sexist and sexually violent things at female officers. And speaking of, Alex Zelinsky with the Portland Mercury tweeted that she noticed something happening, something similar happening this weekend. Not quite violent comments, but misogynistic ones. So here's what Sergeant Maxey had to say about those experiences during our conversation. I didn't really emphasize that it wasn't just one person in the crowd that was saying those things. It was a large group of, the, of people in the crowd that were saying those things, and they were saying it over megaphones, you know, six inches from the officers' faces. Uh, it was, I mean, it was, it was very blatant, very calculated, and you know, one thing that 
in the moment, one thing that I kind of helps me um, balance that is, is, you know, okay, well, they're standing here and they're calling me a racist or saying whatever, but, you know, I'm standing shoulder to shoulder with people of color that are on my side of the line. We're far more diverse group than what I see out there. And I trust the people to my side with my life. And that includes people of every color. And uh, we have a bond and, uh, and a, a brotherhood, sisterhood that, um, you know, that is really, it's, it's unbreakable. And, you know, for somebody to sit there and accuse me of, of being a racist when I'm standing here with, you know, like I said, with a diverse group, we're all working towards the same goals and we're all friends when we leave. Um, and that's coming from, you know, largely white people who think that they have to speak for, you know, the black and brown people in the crowd. It's, it's uh, you know, it just, it's, it, it doesn't make sense to me. And I think that's one of the w ways that I'm able to kind of, you know, compartmentalize it. And it's like, well, they don't really know what they're talking about. So again, I talked with Sergeant Maxey for more than an hour, and we also talked about his thoughts on defunding the police and on the new Multnomah County uh, DA and his choice not to prosecute some crimes at these protests. We'll be playing more from our conversation throughout the week. But again, we have the entire thing up on YouTube right now, so check it out on the KGW YouTube channel. And while you're there, we definitely hope you subscribe.